Barry Dome S5, which is uh, it's a nine meter width sprayer, so it'll do five rows of beds and vegetables, or up to it'll basically match an eight meter drill. It's a, a band sprayer, uh, basically for spraying uh, into row uh, between the crop uh, with a using a hooded shield with a spray nozzle underneath the shield. We can change the angle of the the shield so we can spray different bandwidths. Essentially this is mounted on a carriage uh, so the carriage is each shield is independently mounted so it can follow the ground uh, with the front leading wheel uh, and basically on that it basically maintains the height of the shield close to the crop. We can set these at different distances according to the plant spacing. On this particular unit we've got 15 heads. Uh, we've actually, this is set up for a 14 row crop and because we spray the inter row we have an extra head on each side and we can switch those off according to which direction we're travelling in. So we'll have only 14 heads operating at any one spray pass. We've actually got a second line, uh, we've got a second uh, set of nozzles uh, which are over the row nozzles uh, and these are, these are really designed for spraying over the crop. Uh, so what we're doing there is we can apply uh, fuller fertiliser, we can apply uh, liquid fertilisers, we can apply fungicide, insecticide, uh, different products but always in a band. So we can spray two different products at the same time. We can spray wheat, uh, herbicides into row and we can treat the crop with a separate product. To set the implement as it's travelling we've got two height control wheels which we can set on the jacks here. Uh, manually and these are basically just to position the implement height. Uh, it should be set level. Normally we use on the three-point hitch we'll use the implement in a floating mode so that it will self-level um, and we'll use the height control wheels just to set the height of the implement to avoid any drift. We've got two tanks uh, front mounted unit here. Uh, the first uh, tank is the yellow tank is used for the spray shields uh, and that would contain the herbicide for use in the inter row. The, the second tank, this is the tank we use for spraying over the row, so that would be with a different tank mix uh, for spraying the crop. And because with an inter row we may only spray 30, 40 percent, 50 percent of the inter row, we can reduce the amount of herbicide, we can apply it more accurately. So we've got two twin uh, systems here, they're a mirror image of each other. So there's two pumps here for the ind independent tanks, uh, for two, two for the tanks. Uh, we've got a selection valve here, uh, which is a four position selection valve. So uh, if we're, when we're filling the product, if we're filling it with water in the tank, we, press to f we, we draw liquid through the pump uh, from a bowser or a, a supplementary uh, water tank. The liquid will then be filled into the tank. Uh, we've got uh, tank measure, calibration scales on the tank. When we put the right amount of water into the tanks we can select the tank position which will recirculate the liquid. Um, in the tank position we can, when we're ready to add the, the chemical, uh, the chemical can be added in through the induction hoppers. So it's a standard uh, sprayer induction hopper. Uh, we've got two, one for each tank, uh, which we keep separate. The induction hoppers have got a rinse uh, facility in them. Uh, we put the product into the induction hopper and we would select hopper to take the product to mix it into the main tank. Once this one's empty, we switch it back to tank to recirculate the system. Uh, to thoroughly mix all the chemical. So normally for the spraying mode we have them both systems set to tank. We can have the pumps, <coughs> there's two independent uh, pumps, they're hydraulically driven pumps and we can switch one or both on at the same time depending on whether we're doing an inter row spray with an over row spray or whether we're just doing an inter row spray. The chemical when it's recycling in the cycle mode on tank uh, it's coming up the main pipe from the pump here and um, there's a small divert here which we've got uh, a, a chemical rinse when we're in a rinse mode or we've got a spray agitation which we can select by turning this valve position. 
Um, so there's a small amount of the liquid is fed back into the tank for either cleaning purposes or uh, agitation. Uh, there's a main throttle valve here, which is preset uh, pressure valve, which uh, this is a bypass valve and allow most of the liquid to return to tank, so there's a constant uh, return of, to the tank. And then basically the rest of the liquid is fed along into the boom section. On the boom here, on the top, I don't know if you can see that, you've got a pressure regulating valve. Uh, that's controlled either by a rate controller in the cabin or if we've got an integrated GPS system um, which has got a rate controller function in it, uh, it'll be controlled from the, the GPS in the cab. Um, so essentially that valve is regulating how much of the liquid will go down the spray boom. Um, we've got pressure gauges mounted up front just as a, a visual check for the uh, operator to see that the, the pressure is right in the spray boom. This regulating valve is, is basically working on the bypass, so this is moving its position according to how much pressure we want to apply through the boom, which will regulate our flow rate. Um, and that's all automatic <laughs> control by the rate control function. Um, so the liquid then is coming to this section here. These are on uh, quick release banjo fittings um, so when we demount the tank we can just release from here and isolate the, the spray the spray lines can stay on the tractor they're fed underneath um, the tractor cap the chassis of the tractor to the rear of the implement so the spray lines from the tanking system uh, are coming to the boom section valves here uh, these are obviously controlled by the rate controller function through these uh, DIN connectors here we've got on this particular unit we've got three sections so we've got the left and right sections and the centre section, which is pivoting up. Um, each of these valves will control independently each section. Uh, and they're just basically on-off boom section valves. We've got a pressure sensor on this side, but we can use a, a flow turbine also. Uh, and basically from the boom section valves, the liquid is fed um, down each line into the booms. And you've got on each section, you've got the spray booms, if we use them, the outer one here, You've got uh, the ones marked with the yellow caps are for the shields and the ones on the top are for the overall spray. So you've got uh, each, this is the one section here, which on this particular unit is divided with, this has got four heads on it. Um, and then there's some other heads in the centre section. And these will feed, each line feeds into the, the spray shields uh, on one line. And this second line is the second set of uh, boom section valves, which we looked at earlier. We can set different nozzle tips for different bandwidths and different uh, configurations. We already have on this unit a, a Trimble IQ uh, GPS um, rate controller. Uh, and what we're looking to do is to install an ISOBUS CAN bus unit, uh, which we can then we can plug in all the valves and things through the ISOBUS system, and that will go directly into the rate control function with the GPS unit on the Trimble, and that will control everything automatically. When we finish at the end of the day, we can we have a, an independent rinse tank which is filled with clean water uh, and we can rinse the system by putting both of these to the same rinse tank and we can flush the systems out with uh, the spray booms and the nozzles, everything. And we can also clean out the hoppers, uh, so we can do all that through a rinse cycle when we finish. Because of the wider section, um, we're actually folding, first of all, the centre section. The centre section will fold up, so that this will lift the centre section out of the way, and, and the two arms will fold in behind. Uh, you've got two rams, these are the main... There's two rams here for which are going to lift the centre section. So this centre section here is going to pivot up, uh, and that will be operating these hydraulic rams. Uh, <coughs> these have got a sequence uh, hydraulic valves on them, so as soon as they've reached their position, the two arms will then fold in behind. Uh, and when that's all in position, you've also got integrated in the system. You've got uh, tra you know transport lighting uh, for, for transport on the road. The toolbars themselves on this particular one, we could have the toolbars slightly longer. Um, so we're, we should be able to go up to 12 meters in total. Uh, by coming out and extending it further. Uh, so it's just a question of changing the toolbar uh, and then we can configure that according to the crop. But it depends on the crop that we're actually going to 
uh, use the fire domain. We have to set it up initially for the crop. Thank you.